Hi and thank you for joining me. Today we're going to take our first look at equivalent fractions. If you're not sure about fractions, you might want to click on the link below this video and have a look at basic fractions and their purpose first and then come back to this one. For those who are feeling confident, let's continue. <music> So let's start by having a look at what we mean by equivalent. Equivalent fractions actually have the same value. Therefore, they are equal in value, but they don't look the same because the numbers on the top and the bottom are different. Let's have a look at what I mean by this. And here's a square. So let's look at one of the simplest fractions of all. I am simply going to divide the square into two equal parts. And therefore, the left-hand side part that's now been shaded is one half of the square. So we know that we can write that quite simply as one over two, that is one half. However, Let's divide this square further. And in fact, I'm going to put a line straight across the middle. So we have now divided into four equal parts. Now let's take another look at what has happened to the shaded area of the square. Well, now the square has been divided into four pieces. So as a fraction, we know that means the number on the bottom is the four. If we look at how many of those areas are shaded, well, it's one, Two. So the fraction that has been shaded is 2 out of 4. In other words, 2 quarters. But we can see that nothing has actually changed. It is still one half of the square that is shaded. This must mean that one half is the same as 2 quarters. Therefore, they are equivalents. I've now taken it a stage further and drawn more lines. So if we look at the number of equal parts that we have now divided the square into, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Therefore, we are now looking at a square that has been divided into eighths. But the number of shaded ones is 1, 2, 3, 4. Therefore, we have four eighths that have been shaded in but we are still looking at a half so a half is also equal to four eighths they are equivalents now let's have a look at how we work out equivalent fractions this time i am going to start with the fraction one third now here is our rule for finding equivalents if we multiply the top number by any number, let's say we're going to multiply this time by 2, then we have to multiply the bottom number by exactly the same. So let's see how this one works out. 1 times 2 is 2, and on the bottom, 3 times 2 is 6. And that means we have found a pair of equivalent fractions. 1 third is the equivalent of 2 sixths. Let's go again and multiply the top. This time let's multiply that by 3. If we're going to multiply the top by 3, we have to multiply the bottom by 3. Let's look at the answer again. 2 times 3 is 6 and 6 times 3 is 18. This looks like a more complicated fraction, 6 eighteenths, but it is equivalent to 2 sixths and equivalent to 1 third. All these fractions have an equal value, even though they look very similar. I will go again and multiply the top by 2 again. Therefore, I'm going to multiply the bottom by 2 again. 6 times 2 is 12 and 18 times 2 is 36. And we can continue doing this to find more and more equivalent fractions. And in fact, this can work in the opposite direction. Let's say you are given a fraction such as 8 over 20, and you are asked to find equivalents. Well, 
rather than multiply, we can in fact divide. And it's the same rule. In this case, I'm going to divide the top by 2. Therefore, I have to divide the bottom by 2. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. 20 divided by 2 is 10. Therefore, I have found an equivalent fraction. Quite often, we're asked to do this until the numbers we finish up with are as low as possible. So in this case, we might try again. And I'm going to divide by 2 again. Top has to be the same as the bottom, remember. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. And 10 divided by 2 is 5. We end up with the fraction 2 over 5. So 2 fifths is as small as we can go. But each of these, because we have followed the rule of dividing the top and the bottom by the same number, are all equivalents. So let's finish then with a typical question uh, such as you might find in a test. And we are being asked, which of the fractions below are equivalent to 1 sixth? Now, the only way to solve this one is to compare 1 sixth with each of these fractions using the rule that we've just learned. So let's have a look at the first one. We are comparing 1 sixth with 3 fifths. So let's follow the rule and say what's happened to the top number. Well, in order to get from 1 to 3, it has been multiplied by 3. 1 times 3 is 3. Now we know that if that's the case, we have to multiply the bottom number by 3. Now 6 times 3 is 18. It isn't 5. Therefore, this fraction cannot be the equivalent. Let's try the second one. We're now comparing 1 sixth with 2 thirds. Again, what has happened to the top number to get from 1 to 2? It has been multiplied by 2. Therefore, we have to multiply the bottom number by 2. 6 times 2 is 12. It isn't 3. Therefore, that one doesn't work either. Let's try the third, which is 1 sixth compared with 6 tenths. In this case, the top number here has gone from 1 to 6. It has been multiplied by 6. Therefore, we should be multiplying the bottom one by 6. 6 times 6 is 36. It is not 10. That one is also wrong. So we have to hope that the answer is the last fraction. And in this case, it's 1 sixth compared to 3 eighteenths. Let's have a look again. What has happened to the top number? It has gone from 1 to 3. That means it has been multiplied by 3. Therefore, we need to multiply the bottom by 3. 6 times 3 is 18. Therefore, 3 eighteenths is the answer. And 3 eighteenths is an equivalent to 1 sixth. And that's it for equivalent fractions. If you want to look further about fractions, I do have a video on putting fractions in order that you might want to have a look at next. And I'll put a link to that at the side here. In the meantime, thank you. If you've enjoyed it, please subscribe and hopefully I'll see you again.